Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Imagineer Systems Mocha. My name is Ben Hushner from Curious Turtle, and in this tutorial we're going to be using Mocha's planar tracker to create a rock solid track mat, and then also use the data we get from that tracker to drive another effect in After Effects. So the project we're going to look at now is to take this eye footage and give it a sort of alien invasion quality to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to black out the whole of this iris here. Now one of the problems we've got is that obviously the uh, the eye is shaking around a bit more. So this could give us a few problems when we're rotoscoping, but not when we're using Mocha. We're first going to track the eye and I'm just going to come in here and draw a rough shape around the iris there. And I'm just going to call this my eye track. There we go. So just draw a rough shape and hit track and let that just track it, track along. So instead of using a traditional point tracker, which could easily be fooled by changes in uh, lighting or, or even just the, uh, the general noise in the picture there, the planar tracker is able to hold wherever the eye moves to and is not affected by any of the noise in the image. Okay, so that's done. And let's just roll through. That's looking like it's tracked very nicely indeed. So I'm going to lock that track layer up and just uh, turn off visibility because we don't need it right now. Uh, and now I'm going to rotoscope the eye out. So just going to create a rotor spline for the eye. And I'm going to use the, uh, the X spline tool here. Now, if you haven't used X splines before, they, they work very differently to, um, to regular Bezier splines. So instead of creating points and then dragging handles out, all we're doing is creating points and then we can come in afterwards and we can adjust the tension on those points there so it's it's like um having a board full of nails and and having a string wrapped around those nails so basically what you're doing is just making the string more or less tense there as a fantastic way of creating roto splines on organic images So that's all looking pretty good there. We don't need to do, do too much here. Okay, and so if we just play this through, you can see that the, uh, the shape is just, just staying completely static. So now what I want to do is I want to link that to the track that, uh, the track that we've just made. So all I have to do is come down here, link my layer to the eye track here. And if I play this through, We'll see that that shape now fits perfectly with our eye footage without us having set any keyframes whatsoever. Very nice. So I'm just going to call this eye roto, and we can check that that is actually matching perfectly by turning on our mat. Let's take the colorize off and take our overlays off. And we can even turn stabilize on so that will just hold our footage in the uh, in the center there this won't affect any of the final results it's just to help us work through and check the uh, stability of our mat and that's actually pretty good now the only thing i really want to do with this is to soften it up a little bit you can see that uh, there's nice soft areas here so that's really going to affect our work later on in the process when we use this as a, as a track mat so i could use the edge width here to just soften the edges all around, so give it a bit of a blur. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the tools up here to, to move these points independently. So up here I've got my, um, my arrow with a B, which means that when I move a point here, it's gonna move both the inner and the edge points. But if I come to this eye here and just move it along, it's only gonna move the inner, inner point for me. So now I've got this red shape here, which is our hard edge and we've got our blue shape around here, our blue spline around here, which describes the edge softness. So if I just come here, and I'm just going to, uh, to shift these so it's really only in the, uh, the most opaque parts of the, uh, of the image, and I'm gonna come and use the E just to, to stretch out my edge there so we get a, a nice soft edge around where we need it to be. Bring that in there, take the edge out there. So you can see that instead of having to just use a, a, a sort of brute force uh, blur, we can customize our edges as, uh, as we need to. 
So we've got full control over our, over our rotor spline. And that's looking good for me. There we go. So if I turn my mat back on, turn the overlays off, you can now see we've got some, some levels of softness going around on the edges there. And again, that's just, just moving along with the, uh, with the track still. Excellent. So the other thing we need to look at is motion blur. So whenever our subject moves, it always gets a slight bit of motion blur. Now we want to recreate that in our spline itself. So I'm going to turn auto key off so I don't create another keyframe here when I come to my, uh, my motion blur here. Turn the motion blur on and you can see that we've now created another set of lines. We've created these golden set of lines outside and inside our, our edges. This is how Mocha tells us where our motion blur is going to be, uh, going to be affected. So if I crank the motion blur up, you can see that it's actually spreading those lines out. So we're creating more of a blur. If the subject is very stable, of course, we're not going to get much of a blur itself. So it's, it's working just like a, a, a regular motion blur does. So 4.3, that's a little bit too wide. So I'm going to take that to, to three. That's still still high, but um, that should be quite good for, for this subject here. OK, so now I'm ready to export that out. So I come down to file and render and I'm just going to render out the mat because we're going to use this as a tracking mat in our compositor. So I'm just going to come to the iRoto here, save it out as a quick time movie and just call this iRoto. Save it animation, millions of colors, no keyframes. And let's just let that render out. Okay, so now that's finished rendering out, let's go into After Effects. <laughs> 